Hi friends, just want to bring you a word about the ark of God and just focusing particularly on 2 Samuel chapter 6. If you want to open the word of God, um, it might help just to dig in a little bit deeper and see what the spirit wants to reveal specifically to you. Earlier in the year, I'd had this word um, and the Lord just saying, build arks for my glory build arcs and when I'd been thinking about that I was thinking okay you know when I think about an ark I think about Noah's ark I think about arcs in terms of rescue um, rescue in the storm rescue from sudden disaster and I do think that is the kind of arc that the Lord is talking about but maybe um, in a different way to what we would have thought um, in a sense of him wanting to be front back and center of our lives and in that way we will be saved Um, and then this other piece in scripture about the ark is obviously not just Noah's ark but the ark of the presence of God the covenant that the Lord makes with the people Um, and just feeling like the Lord is saying "I, I want my presence right back at the heart of my people and I think it's fair to say that not only are we seeing a great rescue underway but we're also seeing that the Lord is saying my presence over my people that I want my presence to take up residence amongst my people again and that my presence is more important than the people is my presence amongst you or has the glory departed from you and from where you are And uh, so as we look at 2 Samuel chapter 6, this is the moment where David orders the ark back to Jerusalem. And the ark has actually been in the house of Abinadab. Abinadab. I think that's how you say it for over 20 years. Um, And Saul has not inquired of the Lord during his reign. Um, And David is in this place of saying, I am going to inquire of the Lord and I am going to bring the presence of the Lord back to the heart of everything that we are as a nation in Israel. David knows it's time to bring him back. And I find it interesting that Alizia guards the ark at Abinadab's house. So there's this 20 year period, but the only reason that he can guard the ark is because he's consecrated unto God. And actually, um, he probably would have died in the presence of the ark if he hadn't have been consecrated. David brings the ark, he sets it on a new cart and he sings and worships the Lord ahead of it. But when they get to the threshing floor, Uzzah does something interesting if you want to look at it. He's the son of Abinadab as well. And he reaches out and he takes hold of the ark of God because the oxen start to stumble. And Actually, what happens is the Lord's anger rages against Uzzah and he destroys him in that moment and he's died. And I have to say, when I was reading this a little while ago, I was just thinking, flip, like this guy's trying to save the ark from falling down. Um, You know, does this not look like he's doing the right thing in this moment? But in actual fact, he's not. He's not doing the right thing and he's dishonoring the Lord by reaching out to touch the ark and thinking that he knows the best way to save it, that he knows his will, his way, his mind knows what's best and actually forgetting how big, how mighty and how powerful the presence of the Lord is, how mighty he is to save and he's the one who saves, not us. He's the one that rescues, not us. And Uzzah thinks he needs to intervene to save the ark. And I think so often we think, oh, we need to do this, or we need to do that, or we're the answer. And the Lord says, I'm way bigger than you. And my presence is way bigger. And honor me and honor my presence. And the other thing about this is that Uzzah didn't draw near with the right preparation. Eliza had when he was in the house with his father, he had consecrated himself, but Uzzah wasn't consecrated. And so the Lord is saying here to David and to the Israelites, guys, you have to prepare yourselves for my presence. You have to honor my presence. You have to consecrate your lives. You have to center yourselves on me and get clean, get washed, get sorted, bring me sacrifice, lay your lives down, surrender again. The Lord wants us to center on his presence, 
be transformed in his presence, but also give us clear instructions. I find it fascinating that they inquired about bringing the ark back. So it says in 1 Chronicles 15, 13, we did not inquire of the Lord about how to bring it back in a prescribed way. So there was this sense of David saying, okay, I know I need to bring the ark back, but he didn't find out how to bring it back. So there's a sense of, okay, we want the presence of the Lord right back at the heart of everything, but then he didn't inquire as to the how, as to the mandate. And I just felt the weight of the Lord on this saying to us as the people of God, okay, I know you want me, I know you want my presence, but make sure you inquire as to how. Don't go rushing ahead with your own ideas, with your own thoughts about the mandate that you might have, but wait for clear instruction. There was clear instruction around the ark. You know, only the Levites could carry it, only on poles, only on their shoulders. And yet there is us are not consecrated, carrying it on a new cart and then reaching out to try and grab hold of it in this space of the threshing floor. And I thought, you know, we must note the fact that it is at the threshing floor because the, the reality is that this is a place of separation between the wheat and the chaff. And the Lord is in the business of bringing out his winnowing fork again and going to work to separate the wheat from the chaff. And he's saying, my children, I want you to get on your knees before me and deal with the junk in your lives and be free from the rubbish in your lives. Forgive us, Lord, for having the right intentions, but going about it the wrong way. Will you cleanse us and will you deliver us? And it feels almost a bit like we're in another hour, like John the Baptist, where John the Baptist is saying, you know, repent, the kingdom of heaven is near, repent and turn. I feel almost like it's a last chance saloon where the Lord's like, do you realize how mighty and powerful I am? And yet come to Jesus because this isn't doom and gloom, is it? We come to the threshing floor. We come to this moment in the presence of the Lord. And because of the work of Christ on the cross, we are free. We are healed. We are delivered in a second as we repent and as we turn to him. But honoring the presence of the Lord is this is so, so important. Just recently when I was somewhere ministering, I felt like the Lord was saying to me, I don't want man-made offerings anymore. I want consecrated lives. We're at the threshing floor. And the reality is after they'd taken only six steps carrying the ark of God, they then sacrifice a bull and they sacrifice a fattened calf. And I felt like the Lord was highlighting this on the journey that David's on with the ark back to Jerusalem, on the journey carrying the presence of the Lord. They have to keep stopping and sacrificing. And I felt like this isn't a religious thing. This isn't an Old Testament traditional thing that we need to throw out. This is the reality that the Lord wants us to lay down our lives and lay down everything that would hold us back. And you might have done loads of that already. I mean, I feel like I've been doing that for the last three years. But are we again in a moment of the Lord just saying, you're holding too tightly to this? Will you let it go? You're holding too tightly to them. Will you let them go? Is there anything that we're setting above the Lord? Anything that's too important to us, like the rich man, you know, the rich young ruler where we just can't let go. And the Lord says, let my spirit help you lay that down. Sacrifice again and let's continue to carry my presence forward. And then we have this moment where David dances before the Lord. And this was actually the moment that the Lord drew me to first and most strongly because he was like, he was saying to me, and look how undignified David is. Look how much David loves me. Just wearing a simple linen ephod that the priests would have worn, just a simple garment around him and dancing in public before the Lord, unashamed and not embarrassed and not worried about what people are thinking. And I felt like the Lord was saying to me, and you're going to see more and more and more people undignified before me and they are going to cause offense and people are going to react 
to them, but get ready to display the affection that I love, that I've loved on you and you're loving on me. Do not be afraid of man. And I feel like people are going to emerge from the cave. David emerged from Adjalam. People are going to emerge from the secret place and they're going to emerge so on fire in intimacy with the Lord Jesus. And the people are going to have all kinds of reactions to them. But I just, I hope that I would be one of them that would join him. I hope that I would be a person that would say, David, let me dance before the Lord with you. Um, let us be those that are unashamed and unhindered. And I think there is this kind of in the secret place that David did where he was this shepherd boy running away, running from Saul, hiding from Saul, and yet suddenly coming out of this hidden place into the public space on fire for the Lord. And he was king. He was ordained as king because of his heart for the Lord. He cared more about the Lord than he cared about anything or anyone else. And we have this moment, and as we draw to a close, but when Michal, his wife, is just so concerned by how David is behaving, and she's looking upon him, and she's thinking, this is below his dignity as a king. She's thinking, look at how he's responding. Look at what he's doing. Why is he doing that? He's the king, and yet he's practically naked, dancing before how before the ark, how disrespectful, how embarrassing. And I just thought, wow, how interesting that Michal would have been, no doubt, in a lot of pain because David had actually taken her back as his wife and she probably resented him for his behaviour towards her. So her heart and her mind were consumed with a level of pain towards him. And she's the one in the house looking down saying, why are you doing that? And David turns around and says, I'm going to become even more undignified than this, Michal, even more. You can't stop me because I care more about what the Lord says. And I, I think my heart goes out to Michal in this moment because I know there's pain in my own life. I know there's resentment. I know that I've looked at people and judged them. And yet the Lord says, you're not too far for me to reach, Anne. I want your heart as well. I want your mind as well. I want to deal with all of that in you. Will you lay it all before me so you too can dance undignified before me? Because every single one of us, he's calling us and he's transforming us. And it's in the hidden places and in the deep places where we just say, God, I'm sorry. And he calls us by name and we develop this intimacy in that place of transformation. And we're taking off the clothes that we've worn um, in the past, the junk, the, the grave clothes. And the Lord is clothing us in a new way. I'd imagine that David felt pretty vulnerable in the linen ephod. I don't know if you feel pretty vulnerable in this hour, but the Lord is transforming our identities and he's creating us into different people who are sons and daughters of the king with hearts completely sold out for him. He's bringing forth true worshippers, those who are not worshipping for any kind of human acclaim, but just for the glory of the Lord and for the sake of his kingdom, worshippers of spirit and truth. And just finally, I wanted to say that, you know, the threshing floor was a round, hard floor um, where they separated the wheat from the chaff. And the Lord has been speaking to me about round houses that he's bringing forth with the fire at the heart of these houses. And I believe that this is where we come into an encounter with the Lord. We're transformed by the power and the presence of God. And we rise up so full of the Spirit, so on fire for Jesus that many, many, many are going to come into the kingdom. Will you arise like David in this hour? Bless you, friends.